And welcome back to Political Roundtable, RNC edition. Doug Miles and uh, Gary Schuster uh, with you tonight. Gary, uh, as we uh, record the uh, program right now, we have both just watched uh, the conclusion of Mitt Romney's speech. We'll get to that in a minute, but uh, the Republican convention concludes a, a three-day event. Uh, as we said, uh, Monday's uh, day was canceled because of a storm, but a more condensed uh, convention. And uh, let's start with, I guess, the, the, probably one of the more unusual speeches you're ever going to see at a convention. Uh, Clint Eastwood came out. Uh, it was supposed to be a surprise uh, speaker. That uh, broke uh, pretty early who it was going to be. And uh, I thought it was very entertaining. Uh, it seemed like he was kind of doing it off the cuff. I didn't see him uh, looking at any teleprompter at all. What would you think of him? Yeah, I, uh, I was a little surprised. I Somewhere along the line, I think it might have been either Monday or Tuesday, I saw that he was going to be the speaker. Um, I don't know if it, it, it sort of pointed out that it was going to be the speaker who introduced you know, Rubio and was on the final night, but it said he was going to be uh, a speaker and sort of associated with him, you know, being here the, uh, you know, as the uh, sort of mystery guest, I guess it was. <laughs> It really wasn't a mystery. It was, it was a mystery to me, though. His, his whole thing, I mean, I, I agree that it was um, sort of off the cuff, but it was almost disjointed in a way. I mean, it, he, he zoomed and hawed around. Uh, he made his point finally, but uh, the, the, uh, the, I thought the thing with uh, an empty chair with Obama in it was, was, didn't work. I, I saw one of the originals back in a presidential debate when John Anderson was running. Uh, and they had a president, uh, empty chair on the stage in Baltimore when he was supposed to be. Right. Uh, and Jimmy Carter, Jimmy Carter made that one work. This one I didn't I think worked too well. But it was interesting to have it there and so to speak for uh, the uh, the Hollywood uh, the Hollywood set, so to speak, who uh, who aren't in the uh, you know, the Democratic column. And um, I don't know. I, I, it was okay. I guess it was. Um, I just thought it was a little, a little trite myself. You know, I, I wasn't, I, I wasn't overly impressed by it. I thought it was good that Eastwood was there and it might help in some place, but I don't think he did the job he could have done if he didn't really read a script. Yeah, I think that yeah, the chair bit uh, fell a little bit flat because uh, it went on too long. I, I think he had some good lines, but like you said, it might have been better if he did have. Uh, some of the the speech maybe on the teleprompter because, like you said, he did hem and haw a little bit along the way, but it, it did look like he was doing it off the cuff and uh, got some good lines out there. It'll be interesting to see uh, the reaction he gets. But uh, let's move on. Uh, he did introduce. Actually, he didn't really introduce the next speaker, but uh, Marco Rubio, Senator Rubio, came out right after him. And uh, I tell you, there's a guy. You know, we've talked about it before, Gary. Uh, he, he was uh, in the running to be the vice presidential pick. Uh, uh, this time around, but uh, you li listen to him tonight, you listen to him and other appearances on TV and just around the state of Florida. Uh, here's a guy that if he doesn't have a future in, uh, on the national stage, uh, there's something wrong. I, I think he, he made a good uh, presentation tonight. What, what did you think? Yeah, I thought so, too. Uh, he sort of set the theme uh, early. Uh, Romney came on later and, and sort of spoke about faith and family and, and, and jobs. That's exactly what Rubio was talking about with his grandfather and father, and, uh, you know, coming from Cuba and uh, working hard and uh, the family being the important uh, part of the family and the jobs and working two jobs and his mother working all night as a stock clerk at Kmart. So it sort of set the tone for what was to come. And um, I thought uh, something was curious to me, too, was that uh, two years ago, when Rubio was running for the set, uh, the person who introduced him was Mitt Romney. Right. Uh, yeah, yeah. So it turned around a sort of fair play here. I mean, he was in Florida. It's a Florida convention, and he is uh, the only U.S. senator from Florida, and uh, therefore was uh, a great guy besides the fact he was uh, Hispanic. To, uh, to introduce uh, to introduce Romney, but I yeah you know, I thought his speech was good. I thought he was uh, um, I don't know what you'd say. I thought he was uh, probably uh, talking to um, not so much the Republican Party but moderate Democrats. I think he was trying to open the door to this party in a number of ways to uh, sort of the values that uh, modern Democrats have expressed over the years, uh, Clinton made, made hay with it, 
and uh, as did others, um, to uh, to try and join you know join the party, whether it be Clinton's case or Democrats or earlier case or Republicans. But they know they need it. They know they need that. And, uh, and I think uh, both speeches tonight, uh, Rubio and Romney's, were both uh, almost invitations to uh, come back, come back where you belong. Mm. I thought it was interesting uh, after Rubio announced uh, Mitt Romney. I, I never seen this before. I mean, you've covered uh, conventions uh, uh, a lot longer than I have, and, and been to more of them. But uh, just the way uh, Romney came in, almost uh, on a red carpet within the arena itself, uh, that seemed kind of unique to me. I've never seen that before. Have you? No, I've never seen that. Usually, they come out from behind the stage or you know someplace close up top. But uh, this was uh, a, a very different kind of a thing. This is almost like a red carpet in Hollywood. It's uh, like the local hero returns home from the war. <laughs> you know? And uh, he did the handshake uh, line. The handshake line took about five minutes. <laughs> yeah, it did. I mean, I saw I saw there some interesting people in that line. One of them was Orrin Hatch. I saw him. Yeah, uh, right. The, 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 the senator from Utah, and they had. Uh, Iowa and Utah, those those two states in Idaho, uh, all very close to each other. They were very, you know, very instrumental. Of course, Iowa instrumental in the first uh, presidential caucuses um, uh, out there, and uh, spent a lot of time in some of those delegations more than he did in others. Uh, primarily because he probably spent more time with them during the uh, during the primary. Run. He knew it. You know? mm. It, it did take a while to get on stage, but uh, he came up there, and uh, uh, as they all say, when the, uh, the first line is, I accept the uh, nomination, got the, the, the big hand, and then went into a speech. Uh, it was going to be about 40, 45 minutes, that's what they said originally, and, and it stayed uh, pretty much to that, uh, to that time limit. Uh, I thought he uh, did a good job of kind of telling his story, some things I did not know about him. Uh, obviously, you, you know a little bit more about him. You lived in the state where his father was a governor. Uh, George Romney, so you probably know a little bit more about his background, but I think he had to do that for, like you said, the people uh, out there that uh, don't know much about him, uh, telling kind of a, a biographical story about him. So I thought he did a good job with that. Yeah, I, you know, I, as you said, I grew up in Michigan. I, I, I knew his dad, and uh, my, my mother actually was uh, a personal shopper for his mother at uh, a women's department store in Birmingham, Michigan. Wow. Lenore, Lenore Romney used to call my mom and say, you know, what do you have my mom? We'll get something in and call Lenore. So I knew that that was, uh, you know, that was, that was a, a close relationship um, with he and his mother and the whole family. And, uh, yeah, I mean, it was, um, it, it was sort of common knowledge to me. And I knew when he was, I was in Massachusetts when he was governor there. I was also working out in Utah. He was running the Olympics. So I've seen him. Uh, and I talked to him out in Utah during a couple of fundraisers for Olympic events and that kind of thing. So I've seen him up close over the years and his family. So I know him better better than most, probably. Uh, but uh, he came out there tonight and spoke about the need for three things, I think. Well, what, what his vision is. And it's what he had to do because this is not how people know this thing when he ran, you know, four years ago. Uh, this is the closest he's gotten to the ring, so to speak. And so. He had to speak, I think, about his vision uh, for the country. He had to speak about uh, himself, which he did, I think, and, and sort of make himself likable because the criticism has been he isn't very warm and cuddly. And I think that's actually true. Uh, don't know him a little better than others do. Uh, he's a little stiff, a little hubble. Once he once he warms up and he knows you, he's even a lot better. But on first glance, it's. Uh, I mean, I even watched that receiving line at the end of the stage. Some of those handshakes and stuff were, and the hearts were just sort of uh, for the camera almost, you know right. what I mean? Yeah. And uh, the last thing is he had to take apart Obama's record and say what he was going to do about it and why it wasn't good for the country. And I think he accomplished those things, um, you know, which was, I think, the goal of that speech. Yeah, and he had to make a speech tonight, uh, of course, in the convention, the uh, did a tribute, uh, I believe, last night to uh, to Ronald Reagan. They have to kind of compare uh, what this situation is uh, back to about 1980, and you covered that so uh, so thoroughly. You know what that was like then. I think it's a similar kind of thing, and, and Romney had to make a speech 
almost Reagan-esque. Obviously, nobody's ever going to be as good as Ronald Reagan was, but I think he kind of tried to emulate that style tonight, a little bit folksy, as folksy as, as he can get. And, and he did outline his plan, a five-point plan for uh, what he says will create uh, 12 million jobs. So I think it was structured very well, the speech. I think it had to be, he had to have all those points in there to, to kind of please the base, which is the point of the convention, but to try and get maybe the people that, you know, are not sure yet, or maybe the opposition that might be watching tonight, to say, well, let me at least listen to this guy. You know, he talked about, uh, you know, the need for, uh, you know, in energy independence, uh, you know, within eight years. Um, talked about, uh, you know, education, talked about balancing the budget, health care, uh, a little bit about taxes. Um, you know, so he, he touched all the bases, I think, and, uh, you know, at the end of the speech, and, um, you know, ended with, I think, a, a pretty good crescendo that, uh, you know, got him off the podium and uh, in, in, into the race, which will officially start probably Labor Day is what it, what it normally does. And uh, so he's got a couple of days left here. This weekend will be the beginning of the race. And you will see over the next two months until the election on, I think, the 4th of November, uh, you'll see a lot of money spent by both parties. You'll see more negative advertising, and uh, you'll see uh, you know, polls that I think tighten toward the end. This is going to be a very, very close race, I think, in, in, in a lot of places, including here in Florida. Yeah, the money now that uh, he has raised, the party has raised, can now be used. They had to wait till officially he was the nominee, which uh, he is now. So uh, I'm sure the first ad is being uh, shipped to the radio and TV stations right now. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Well, the thing is, they said this is going to be the first presidential campaign uh, where you're going to see a billion dollars spent by both parties. Yeah, yeah, amazing. Yeah. So well, it's, 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 a, uh, it's, going to be, it's going to be a wild two months, I think. The bounce, it's always the term uh, after conventions. Uh, I don't know if that really is uh, the same as it used to be. Uh, what do you expect after uh, these three days in Tampa? Uh, I, I think you probably see a little bit. I don't think the bounce now is like the what it used to be, given the fact that you have all these different media outlets. Uh, the, the, the bounce, the surprise isn't there. Um, between the primaries and uh, the, the media, uh, everything's going every 10 minutes. You know? Right. And so, so there's not a whole lot of surprises. There's not a, little, a, a lot of, oh, gee, I didn't know that. Uh, there's not enough, I don't think, to make it uh, more, as they say, than a dead cat bounce. But, but uh, <laughs> it will be a little, perhaps. The polls might show, I think, a percent or two. But I don't think it's going to be four or five like it used to be. Of course, the Democrats uh, have their convention next week, so there's not the big, uh, not that much margin of uh, time between the two. So uh, Democrats get their chance next week uh, up in Charlotte. And we'll. Uh, uh, keep an eye on that and uh, do another edition of the, the roundtable uh, on that uh, as news warrants. But, uh, Gary, it was uh, kind of fun uh, having a convention uh, sort of in our own backyard uh, down here in uh, the Tampa Bay area and uh, enjoyed covering it. Yeah, no, it was, a great, it was a great thing to have here. This is the third one in Florida over the course of time, and uh, I, thought, I thought they did a pretty good job of, of, of pulling it off. Gary Schuster, thanks for joining us uh, on the Roundtable, and uh, thank you all for listening, and we'll do it again next time here on the Political Roundtable.